Hey folks, welcome to unit two. I don't know what is up with my camera at the moment. Um, so I'm sorry if I look fuzzy. I promise I am not trying to use a filter. Um, welcome back though to week two. I want to do a quick walkthrough with you as I will always do on Mondays. Um, so let me share my screen and we're going to take a look at what is going on in the second week of our course. So as always, when you first log in, of course, you're going to be taken to the announcements page. Um, when you are ready to proceed into the week, go ahead and click on unit two. And as always, you're going to see basically the same setup. You've got the objectives and activities. What are we, you know, what are we doing this week? What are the basics? Then, of course, you have the stuff, the, the actual materials for the readings and resources. This week, like last week, you'll have two formal assignments. One is a discussion board, and the other this week is a writing assignment. So last week we had discussion board and a knowledge check. This week we'll be doing our first official writing assignment. So let's take a look at the readings and resources first. As usual, um, you've got your ebook. And hopefully by now you've got your ebook access. I, I've seen a lot of cool things that people have been talking about with the readings. So I think we're on uh, good ground there. This week we are focusing on three different kinds of literature. Um, the three main genres that we think of when we think of creative literature are poetry, short stories or fiction, including novels, and of course, then drama or plays. Now, we also have a lot of writing in our culture today that is creative nonfiction. Um, and we'll have some of that before, before all is said and done, but you may notice that our textbook is divided into poetry, fiction, and drama. And so you will have some selections for all of those um, that reflect some of the multicultural voices that we want to take a look at. Um, a couple of the poets are probably going to be familiar to you. Emily Dickinson, of course, was a Caucasian woman. Um, she's definitely not necessarily a member of any minority, certainly no ethnic or racial minority, but as a woman, and especially as a woman writer back in those days, uh, I found this letter really interesting to look at by her because it talks about her self-image. Many of you will be familiar with Langston Hughes, of course, one of the premium poets and playwrights of the Harlem Renaissance. Um, and we're only looking at one particular poem by him for this week, but you are free to read the others. Um, you're just required to look at the one. And then we have a poet named Julia Alvarez, who's really fascinating. Um, and not only do we have some of her poetry, but we have then also what she said about those poems. Um, so it's really fascinating to take a look, um, sometimes even just doing some side research when you come into a, a, an author that you find interesting can be really fun. But of course, in this case, they're providing um, those extra things for you. So those are in the poetry section, poets and poetry. The fiction section, we have a Native American writer, Louise Erdrich. Um, we have Judith Ortiz Kofer, Grace Paley, and Zhu Z. All are female. Um, and so of course they are technically of a minor minority right there, um, but they also represent other subculture voices. So Native American, Puerto Rican, Jewish, and from Hong Kong. Um, so with those, you wanna look again, we're focusing on self-identity here for this, this unit. And then finally, we have Lynn Nottage's play named Poof. And you'll notice it's only page 993 to 99. It's not a huge long play, um, but I think you will enjoy that one as well. Um, <laughs> in the not so distant past, many of you probably um, viewed Joe Biden's inauguration. And uh, if you did, you got to see the amazing talent of Amanda Gorman. Um, so we are 
taking a look at that poem that she read at the inauguration. One of the things that's kind of interesting about inaugural poets is that um, they don't happen very often. Maya Angelou read a, an original poem at Bill Clinton's first inauguration or second, I can't remember for sure, but anyway, one of Bill Clinton's inaugurations, but she was the first since Robert Frost back in the 1950s read um, at John F. Kennedy's inauguration. So it doesn't happen very often. And it's really incredible um, to see not only a, a black woman, but a very young black woman um, being highlighted on that national stage. She's amazing. Um, so anyway, you'll take a look at that. We're also going to be working towards our writing assignments. So remember back in unit one, we have an APA template that you can use. So when you create your writing assignment, you can just use that as, as the basis for it. Um, but this particular link will hook you up um, with all the post library resources that will help you when you're creating works cited entries or references entries, I should say, because we're doing APA um, and other instructor or in, in, and other student resources that will be helpful there. Um, and then finally, we have an article from our library, which I found really interesting um, about multicultural and culturalism in the classroom. And so of course it's geared towards education rather than literature, um, but I thought it was really interesting and definitely uh, plays into what we're doing in the course. So those are your readings and resources. And then once you've done your readings, you are ready to go in and do first the unit two discussion board and then, of course, second, the unit two writing assignment. So um, it's already up on the screen, but let me go ahead and open this uh, just because it'll remind us where we go to click. But uh, choose one of the readings for unit two and write two paragraphs in which you discuss this, the theme of self-identity. In the first paragraph, what are your own thoughts about self-identity? And then in the second paragraph, discuss the theme in that chosen work of literature. Um, so what made you choose this specific reading? How did you relate to or connect with it? You know, what made it stand out for you? Give some examples of where their self-identity discussion uh, comes across. And then of course, you will post those by Wednesday and then come back in before the end of the week and respond to other students, to at least two other students. Um, so take a look at that. That's your uh, discussion forum for this week. And then we can go back to the unit two and the assignment. Now, one of the things that I wanna encourage you to do with the assignment, when we click on this, this is still just that really short description you want to actually pull up the full document that goes into all of the requirements for each of these writing assignments. So we click here. You can also reach that off the other page. And you'll notice this is a much longer document and it has all of the specifics. And it also has the rubric that you that I will be using to grade the work. Um, and it I find it not only helpful, but really integral to take a look not only at the requirements, but at the rubric and where the points are distributed, both before you do the assignment um, and when you're ready to turn it in, just to double check it. And then of course, when you get my feedback back, same thing, go through and look at that rubric and make sure you understand why you got what you got. Um, so I'm not gonna read this to you, you guys can read, but I want you to, to make sure that you do check out the overview, the instructions, and then of course the requirements. Um, we've got sample citations for you, APA citations for the textbook. Um, and then you will also be citing an individual work from the textbook. Now the example that's in this assignment is Lynn Nottage's play. You'll just change the first part of that depending on what you are citing. So if it's um, Langston Hughes poem I2, that's what'll go there, Hughes comma L period, the original year and the, the poem title. 
So that available that is available to you. And I find that to be helpful because sometimes citing things, especially in an anthology, can be a little bit tricky. Now, anything that you look up separate from that, you will cite it, of course, using APA. If you're using resources from the library, there are going to be APA citations available. So that's pretty much it. When you are done with that, you will turn that in by the end of the week. And um, in the meantime, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out and I will get you some help. Thanks guys, have a great week. <laughs>